Oh. Um. Well, welcome, Mr. Crompton. That's welcome. not Simon. What? what? That's that. I mean, I just googled Simon Crompton and just like that's that's Simon. That's Simon. That's yeah. Simon. That's got to be Simon. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. Um, well, welcome everybody to the thing. Um, dress, dress for myself. No, no, there is no there. Simon Compton's not on the call. He's not here. Yeah, Simon is not. No, no Simon's no, not is. on the call. What? No, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me. Uh, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me. Uh, I gotta go hold use on. the restroom. I gotta use the restroom for something. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Simon Crompton. Oh my God, he is here. I'm permanent style. Permanently. That's here. You're doing like an evil voice. <laughs> what are you? What, what are you talking about? That's just. Are you doing Jared Harris almost? <laughs> Jared Harris. I don't know. Yeah. Rain Price. Yeah, there you go. Rain Price. I owe money to the British government. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it. Yeah, um, no one can anyway, it. so today uh, we are we are talking about the uh, his recent and essay now... and. You vamp if, for me, I'll be right back. Yeah, um, if you guys don't know, Simon's been doing a lot of great um, articles lately that are kind of introspective. He's done them kind of before also. He did that whole thing about, like, oh, why I am not a gentleman. Um, and there's, like, one more that he and I were kind of talking about because uh, I did give him a little heads up that we were doing this. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so he had an article, I'll, I'll link it in the chat here, called Should You Dress for Yourself or Others? And I would think it'd be great to kind of discuss this. Uh, if you guys, if anything, please leave a leave a message in our chat. We'll address it. If anyone else, you know, if our if our own audience or in, <laughs> guests more like it in our in our Discord, if they want to jump in, just uh, give, give a ping in the live chat and we'll make sure we call on you or, you know, find a, find a lull or anything. But let me basically go through it. So he basically asks... Did you dress for yourself or others? And he says the answer is both. To no one's surprise. Just kind of like flashy and buddy. Classic menswear kind of goes in this kind of middle ground. Um, where, you know, it's a, it's kind of flashy because it's, you know, like a certain tassel for could be certain ways. And, you know, certain certain cuts can be kind of funny. So dressing for yourself or for others is kind of like this middle road because it depends on context. Like he says here. Anyone that dresses without regard to anyone else is probably being rude and inconsiderate, but dressing to conform is just sad. And so, you know, it's it doesn't stop people from social media saying dress for yourself or, you know, a gentleman dresses for themselves. It's not true. Um, he, he says that clothing is social. Yep. <laughs> That's something that I guess we have <laughs> discussed at length. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a very like, I mean, I don't think he listens to the pod nor no. reads the blog at all. Um, but he does. He, he is to. an avid viewer of the Twitch streams. Absolutely. I mean, he's <laughs> he's here now. Yeah. Um, I think I'm also doing kind of like a Gary Oldman, like bad guy kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. How about uh, Gary Oldman as the um, Winston Churchill? Most terribly. <laughs> is that his? Is that <laughs> his the trailer? What What's Simon de uh, Simon describing when he says most terribly? Um, B and Taylor apparently. Oh shit! <laughs> A little callback if you haven't read the his like pretty pretty crit and and fair critical review of B and Taylor. I mean, it doesn't doesn't fit. You can't you know you call a spade a spade, right? Um, but here he actually has you know a couple of uh, points here. He says like a punk riding down Regent Street in the 1970s, complete with with Mohican. He didn't want to call the Mohawk. <laughs> I guess I mean maybe that's what they call him. In, in London, uh, and said a jacket is only saying something because he's different. If if his bank messenger, ma if his bank ma ma master, his bank messenger, yes, his bank That's manager great. dressed the same way, the effect would be lost. He's not actually dressing for himself. Um, if someone were dressed the same way today, it would have much less impact. There's nothing wrong with being unusual or rebellious in what you wear, but don't pretend it doesn't matter what impression it gives. And today, readers are trying to look smart or dressed up uh, people looking smart or dressed up is likely to be unusual and he says you know uh people in plastic men's or, or his readers forget that 
concept of elegance is social because technically elegance is kind of defined by the people we've talked about this with slouch mm-hmm. with alders and couple a couple of times where you know try as we might if you're in the wrong rooms uh clothing might still rub people the wrong way and in, it even if you're wearing an elegant suit it might still look out of place which will then infer whether it has grace or elegance um you know a gentleman doesn't necessarily wear a suit he's unlikely to drive a flashy car blah blah blah, but he is polite and thoughtful and that means dressing appropriately um but yeah it's it's kind of yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a fun a fun essay here that he still kind of goes in between the two you know, trying to find a balance where he looks well dressed but stand out. Here's the thing for Simon though. This is his his POV coming out here. He likes to find a balance where he looks well dressed but stands out as little as possible. That's the area he plays in just left of center. It means he's a bit smarter than the average guy, but not too much. The difference is in the quality and the cut of the clothes rather than category. And that is a very big differentiation of permanent style and a lot of probably a lot of what other classic menswear style form guys will do compared to say us where we stand out by the category of dress as opposed to the actual and maybe quality and cut kind of play into that too but it's a little bit different for example he says his shirt and his chinos will be different out different to someone else's shirt and chinos Uh, i might look he might look a little unusual while waiting at the bus stop wearing a jacket flannels and loafers but others are there in dress shirts suit trousers and oxfords the jacket puts me one notch smarter but not 10 the difference it's kind of echoing what i've said before that's yeah i was about to say it's very like it's a very you know uh it's different obviously different from the way we address but it's like oh yeah it's about degrees and trying to quantify things which again we as we've discussed at length before we don't necessarily think that way but for some other people it it does it kind of helps this idea of you know not standing out and then picking like the grade to which you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and he talks about Ethan Newton. He says that nothing, uh, Ethan Newton says that his context is different. The, he's often commented saying that nothing feels odd if you spend time around Harajuku in Tokyo. Like no one feels like they have to be a gentleman. You know, it's, 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 if you run a menswear shop, it's his job to push a style and all, you know, in every interesting direction he can think of. So customers can take a little bit a little bit of pieces of it as they like and so you know it's it, it's it's kind of expected from that way you know that when you are a creative person or or like or work in menswear you are kind of afforded this you know ability to stand out a little bit and dress for yourself kind of but it's also dressing for other people we'll get into that in a second um, yeah. But the only thing that, so the only thing, I'm, you know, it's almost closing off here. The only thing that Simon struggles with is whether it's foolish to change clothes based on context. And this is something that we've kind of also talked about a little bit. Um, see, he he feels subconscious, uh, subconscious. <laughs> He's feeling subconscious. Uh, he feels self-conscious wearing a pocket square um, in the suburb where he lives. But, you know, as soon as he gets into the end of his commute, you know, in Mayfair, it makes more sense, um, you know, wearing, um, you know, wearing a pocket or wearing a sport coat. And he goes back and forth. But the most important thing for him is to feel comfortable. So if he doesn't, he just takes it out. And that's something that Spencer and I talked about with the yeah. carpet thing, where it's like, if you feel overdressed wearing a sport coat or a suit, take off your jacket at your job, man. Put it in your bag. Put it on your chair. Like, it's... Or take off your tie, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. not it's not that big of a deal. I, um, yeah... I mean, oh, yeah. I'll finish, I'll okay, finish, yeah, finish off. off. Finish off right here. Because everything and everyone is somewhere in, in between. Um, that's why there's nothing wrong with dressing differently as long term fashions change. As people dress more casually, as they have gradually over the for the hundred years, the average changes. So if you stand out, you drift fur- uh, So if you stand still, you drift further from the average, and you stand out more. Which is also something that we've talked about. Where like if you just try and try and keep up, or you try and stay the same you will still call attention to yourself by being like just kind of absent of uh absent of personality. So it's mm-hmm. he thinks it's better to maintain your distance, how unusual you dress rather than a particular style. Um there's a and he even closes this by saying there's a mathematical way to phrase this. And so that kind of again aligns with all just and kind of figuring out what and the deviation, I mean, right? Yeah, so that, yeah. I was gonna say it's not exactly like a formula, but it's like yeah, how many deviations you are from the mean and 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 what 
which which you know if you were you know if you were able to uh assign values to certain pieces how how much like how much is a sport how much is a madras sport coat put you in over the top compared to say a fun drake's pocket square or something establish you know? a mean assign create a point system that assigns points to various well, that's, things. what's really <laughs> funny is that so when when our friend john was here last <laughs> week we were talking about how we were talking about this kind of idea but the opposite where like what if you were to assign things based on coolness and it was like instead of like cost per wear, it was like benefit per, per wear, and so you could assign <laughs> yeah. things. You could well, no, assign no, no, it was compliment. On... His his no, metric no, no, but, was yeah. Well, yeah. his thing was like at first it was like, and the metric that you would use is if you got a compliment on that particular piece of clothing, yeah. and then that would like okay, so then you know this jacket's super cool because five people said this was cool compared to like these jeans where only only one person said it was good and then i said what happens if you get laid wearing one and he goes well that just makes it, it like you, it's paid for like you, you already got your value back if you're able to uh to fuck while wearing that particular piece of clothing um i brought up no. i brought up the um but that because that's yeah, that, a very that... specific metric that only works for john and his you know his lifestyle well... his uh, oh, hey, hey um, it works for my lifestyle too um okay, I'm just for that there. guess i'm just so, ugly then what well no what i what ah. i brought up was if you if you have that then you should just like take it a step further and start having like a kd ratio for your clothes it's like okay so i did have sex in this jacket this one time but then i wore it three times and did not and so no, <laughs> the I got, ratio I got, goes I, down I, I, I wore it, I got laid twice, but then I got ghosted once, so I'm two for one right now. Yeah. That's, that's how it works. Uh-huh. We need oh to get ridiculous God. with this shit, like baseball stats, oh, yeah. you know? I, hey, doesn't Chuck love baseball stats? And I, and I think like he's like a super nerd about like like sports statistics. Yeah. Um, uh, it could be. But uh, but yeah, MJ. By the way, you're making you're making Jeremy hungry with your background up there. <laughs> I gotta get. Also, I haven't had Dave's. Empty. Let's get. I I have I have not had Dave's. Period. And it's so close to my house, so I gotta go sometime. Yeah, you got to. Um, so guilty free game. We've got some comments here, and I'll let people in our chat maybe write some stuff based on the, uh, based on Simon's essay here. But he goes as as things slowly open back up, he has a yearning for shopping again. The latest eighteen East drop had (laughs) had him window shopping online. Started looking at some suit makers for online, um, oh, uh, on the rack, off the rack, and sad that he missed Lawrence Loafers from Barbonera. Um, Alden Loafers and Suede are nine hundred plus from the Drake's collab. Are they really? Jesus Christ! Is really? that true? That's crazy. That's, in, that's I mean, too much. Yeah, too too small. Um, oh. and I don't, I don't, I also don't know. He's asking how how style form is. Haven't browsed for seven months, and it seems like forever. I don't. I don't know. I'm just kind of like honestly, my my uh, filter of style form is like whatever it was like, like five years ago when I like when I used to like contribute more regularly. Um, but yeah, this idea of dressing for yourself or others. Let's let's kind of get into this for a little bit. Um, I maybe this is comes down to semantics, like always, Spencer. What do you like? I feel like, like you know, I'm sure Henrik's got some philosophical thing he's going to drop on us in a second about you can't possibly dress for others or yourself because it's that's like it's impossible. Um, oh, no pressure, Henrik. Yeah, but I mean, it's one of those things where I feel like Spencer and I always default to dressing for ourselves in a sense. Like, it really depends on how much thunder or gravitas you give to other people's opinions. Well, I guess so. I guess it's not maybe. Not necessarily dressing for yourself, but I am portraying myself to others in the way that I would like to be. Like, not necessarily, uh, um, I, I, yeah, I guess, I guess that's like the semantic difference. You're creating the character of Spencer. Mm -hmm. Honor's back! Hey, yeah. Fix my body though, yay! (laughs) He's creating the character. I mean, yeah, we've we've talked about this. This is a very common theme in the in the streams where you know, and credit to Kiyoshi for kind of uh, turning us on to the the idea of cinematic dressing. Something you see a lot from like um like Ralph Lauren, right? Like creating this kind of like world and and what these characters in this Ralph Lauren world dress like. And so I, that's kind of a different thing. I mean, you know, but like the idea that you know, if you if that is your goal, then you are kind of dressing for yourself. I mean, it's one of those things where. 
maybe Spencer and I have a little bit, and and probably, and probably MJ too. Feel free to jump in. But like when you work in menswear in any capacity, like you, you know, you're at the retail store. Oh, we just got a follow. Like, Thank you very much, James Kung. Oh, hey, hey, welcome. Uh, fell out to China. Um, but <laughs> no, but <Cool>. okay. <laughs> but uh, um, what was I saying? Like when you work at, when you work at a place, right? Like 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 uh, Kiyoshi said in our chat here that when you work in the industry, you do have to push it a little bit. You know that idea that what Ethan Newton said about you know you have to hope that your customers are going to glean uh, anything from from your outfit that they think something is cool. Mm-hmm. You know it could be you know again the for Ethan Newton could be the Gretchen shoots, could be the Wellama hats, and so like even if they still wear like an H and M suit, if they look at um. You know, if they say, oh, that's a cool, thick hat, I should get one, you know, you've kind of won. You've won them over on that particular thing, and that's kind of like the gateway into, um, you know, dressing a the little drug. bit. Yeah, the drug is kind of like, you know, kind of either selling it on the per- the, the, the dresser style or, for business terms, you know, to, to shop at the store again, right? Like, they got you Even if you're thing. in the industry, it kind of depends, though, because Simon is also in the industry, and his whole stick is being... Middle of the road. And that's what he's selling. Well, yes, yeah. Everyone, I mean, yeah. Everyone is selling something, right? Like that. Everyone has a goal, which is why I get for. So for me, in my the way I think of it, it, when you're when when it's dressing for yourself, it's putting your goal in front of other people's goals, I guess. Or, or for example, if we're talking about the whole corporate episode, right, where. Yeah, the goal, like the, your job, your boss's goal is for you to look professional, and you are you are still following that thing. But it's still you're 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 putting a little bit more emphasis on what you want the professional look to be. So then maybe you wear like a Drake's foulard tie, and then um, instead of like you know because like it would have been fine if you just wore like a men's warehouse suit, like that's totally fine. That's probably what your boss wants. But maybe wear like a a Drake's, you know ready to wear suit that has a soft shoulder that no one really sees where that with like a regular OCBD and a plain grenadine tie, like you're kind of winning still. Like you're, you're, you're in, you know, to speak to you all this and, and, and the mathematical way of doing it, you're like an, a modicum in your direction in like, you know, your personal POV, even though it is still professional. So like, to me, this thing for yourself is if, if you have that kind of degree of control and you're able to kind of exude that specific choice, I think that then you're dressing for yourself. I think from this article, Simon is generally leaning in the direction of dressing for himself first. Oh, absolutely. He's yeah, pretty middle, yeah. He's, yeah, he's pretty middle of the road, road at the end of the day, but it's like a 60 40 lean towards dressing well, for Well, I mean, first. I think for every like menswear guy, it's going to be kind of like it's, it's going to be a certain balance because if you're interested in fashion, I mean, like to a certain extent, you are still kind of like dressing for yourself, I guess, because like at the very least, you want to look cool or look fashionable or look mm. the right way to get a date or a promotion at work whatever i guess uh so if you want to call that dressing for yourself then anyone I mean, that's, yeah 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 anyone who is into fashion is in it is in is like you know has a little bit of that uh, yeah you can also I know, I, I like to differentiate it though because um we, we just separate the idea of of the guys who we sort of chastise a lot, so we put on the season, mm-hmm. expect girls to sort of fall, f- fall all over them as a result of that. That's sort of dressing for a purpose as well, but that's not what we mean that's, either. You're not, yeah, you're not wrong. I'll just, I was about to say, like, say that you, you know, yeah, you join, you go, you join a company or something, right? And you, and you say, well, I want to dress for the boss to recognize my work. So maybe it's a safe, but then you, you know, and you, you take steps to be as safe as possible that's and, and and if you know you say that that's your goal then technically yeah you're like you're right all this you are dressing for your own intention um so wouldn't but, dressing for yourself be for example there are mm-hmm. five shirts you can pick and you chose the one you like the best that's dressing for yourself whereas dressing um for a purpose for your boss would be picking the shirt that you think your boss would like the best but maybe it's not the one that you like the best I mean, if they if they both line up, it's a happy coincidence. But uh, if you if you approach that wardrobe, that this hypothetical wardrobe with the premier purpose of, of dressing for your boss first, even if it's not what you choose yourself, then that's yeah, that's not dressing for yourself. 
Yeah, is this like a question of agency? I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I saw I saw Henrik uh, just took his mic off of mute, so feel free to to jump in now. If you're ready. No, I was just gonna say there's a. Uh, you immediately get stuck in that thing when you think if you think about it as as a spectrum. It is worth thinking about whether there is actually other ways of uh, of dressing. But and I want to get back to that maybe in a second. But first, uh, we are dealing with like a what we're talking about is not like a neutral territory. Like the the, the difference between dressing for yourself and dressing for others is the product of a breakdown mm-hmm. of a natural way of dressing for others. Like the the idea of a of a uniform or a dress code when that has broke it's only when that has broken down when the rules no longer are if no longer exist at least are no longer are you know enforced that's when this problem occurs mm-hmm. so there's always a gap when that when that structure disappears or is disempowered then you have that gap between the pov and what you want to be and uh many things but now also dressing has sort of become uh, the medium for, for making up that gap between what you want to be and what you truly are, mm. which, like, in a society, like, absolute structure. You know? And that really wasn't the case until, you know, just, like, a couple of decades ago. That's where this problem comes from. It's not, like, a neutral aesthetic question. It is the product of a historical breakdown of dress in the Western sphere. Yeah? So uh, it's not, like, an abstract question. It's an historical one. That is, yeah, that that's that's very true. Um, it's hmm. it's interesting. But what do you do with that? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where do you go from there, right? I'll just yeah, go ahead. No, it's. No, I was just going to say it's an interesting point, and it's. Yeah, I suppose it's sort of tangentially related to the idea of maybe combinatorial explosion. Once you remove the framework, the frame, the, the guidelines, the dress codes, as Henrik mentioned. Um, you're left well, rather lost, wondering. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, I so when I when I messaged Simon about this because I was like, hey, just a heads up, we are not going to Berkeley breed you. We're not going to. This is not a takedown mm. of your article. This is. Yeah, us. no. To be clear, yeah. I think we all pretty much agree. No, with yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So he, so here I would just chat very briefly about it, and he goes, you know, as we, as like, yeah, as we move into this idea, the issue is guys are finding that I, this this free notion of is being just way too nebulous, right? It's just, it's just, it kind of becomes confusing. And some people just really want to be told what to wear. It's, and, and they want yeah. to know whether it's good or not. Right. There's, there's that aspect of it. And it's not, it's not bad to think that way. You know, sometimes like, I don't like for me, right. I don't want to have to guess if like, if this like, pen is good i want someone to say is this a good pen just tell me so i know if i when i where i'm gonna go to refill my pens right or or if this uh is this tv show good is it worth my time so there is like not as you said in other podcasts and other streams like not everyone has the same um you know love of creativity or, or the uh the uh the the unknown isn't as exciting for them to try out you know it, they, they don't have the sense of adventure that comes with it and whether or not that's sad or 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 a neutral thing is is kind of up to your interpretation i think you know for us obviously we think that when people don't have that excitement or that that call to like okay well i don't know what what is good or what works at my at my work this is an opportunity for me right like we we have that but clearly people don't want to deal with it especially after that after that whole corporate article people were like i rather not even deal with finding out what is what flies by my boss i don't want yeah. to ever have a conversation so it's like some people just don't have that equally you know um Kyoshi, were you were going to say something yeah i mean i think you know, going back to the idea of like people just wanting to be to be told what to wear and like what happens when there aren't rules anymore. Um, yeah. That's something I definitely see with the clientele I get um, now. Um, not so much for work because I think work, there is sort of um, an unspoken dress code more or less for most places. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And I don't think people really worry about that as much, but for me, it's always, I encounter with like wedding clients and 
I think you see this duality of like, I want to look good and wear the correct thing, right? But at the same time, I feel like because I'm a millennial getting married, I have to showcase my individuality and this false notion that I'm a creative person uh, at the same time. And, and also that you have to do that in the realm of menswear, which you have, as that person, have no idea what, what goes on which, in there. Which historically has been, you wear either, you know, formal wear, or you just wear formal wear of some sort, right? Whether right. that be defined as a suit all the way through white tie, which white tie never happens anymore, neither does morning dress. So then it's, you know, most guys think, okay, mm. a tuxedo of some sort, Take or a suit. And but they feel the need to inject some sort of thing to make it their uh, own, right? Like lining. Like, like stupid socks or like a crazy liner or right, longer yeah, wear yeah, bow yeah. ties, even though we're not bow tie people. Like right. there's, I see this all the time and, um, you know, happy to make them whatever they want. But at the same time, I'm like, Honestly, it would just be a lot easier if you just said, I'm just going to wear a totally normal black tuxedo and just call it. Because you won't screw up. Like, you're not going to mess up. It's it's Mm -hmm. the most bulletproof option for most modern weddings. But no one wants to do that. No one wants to do it. They're like, oh, maybe maybe I'll do like a like a pink bow tie with my awesomely fitted, perfect black tuxedo. I'm going to do a pink bow tie because it matches the bridesmaid dresses. See, that, like, that is so I'm like, no, funny. Stop yeah. yourself. Stop it's, yourself. It's crazy because it's, you know, like, I mean, you know, Spencer and I are people who are like, you know, and all of us try and mix ideas of men's with a bunch of different stuff. But I, but what we found is like, you know, a lot of us wouldn't fuck with like messing with black tie. Like we don't really like it's, no, it's like absolutely those things that we, like, yeah, that like, we kind of keep, right? Black, I mean, yeah, like most like, I think like Formal wear, like, you know, like, when you're dressing formally, like, you know, past, like, suits, don't fuck with it. Well, well, it's like, it's like, I mean, it would be cool to wear, like, a tuxedo shirt, like, you can take, I mean, it's, I guess you it's can like, take the individual pieces of black yeah. tie and wear it out, like, I, I would, I would wear opera pumps out, we've seen Kyoshi take ideas, like, the pleated front, like, tuxedo shirts and wear them, like, you know, in different colors, guys have worn dinner jackets with other stuff, whatever, um, but when you're doing the black tie, when you're wearing, when you're when you're gonna wear a tuxedo, it's like just keep it the whole fucking thing. Just don't fucking mess with it. Yeah, you know? keep it simple, stupid. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 really funny. It um, seems like it seems to me though, that the anxiety doesn't stem from feeling a need, feeling that you have to express yourself. It's more that having that feeling, you don't know how to express yourself because you don't know a lot about classic menswear. Because even for example, would have no problem. Like if he, like we talked about this during the uh, business dress yeah. uh, discussion, where it's a code, and he, but if you was told that, he'd have no problem thinking of ways to express himself within that framework. Yeah. Whereas these clients you have, Kyoshi, well, have have no idea, and that's what, and that specifically is what causes the anxiety, as opposed to. Well, yeah, because they're they're not they're not used to being in that that world or wearing those things regularly. You know, it's it's like. At this, like, if this was super early, yeah, I would have much more of an issue, like, if I wore, like, a floral H&M jacket or, like, something crazy. But then now, with my more refined taste, it's a little bit easier for me to figure out what really works in a in a, in a particular context, right? Um, yeah, it wouldn't the, cause you anxiety at all. And, right, and, and the thing is... Even, you, I, even, if we, even if we send you to, like, Royal Ascot, where you have right. to wear morning dress, I'm sure you could still find a way to slouch in morning dress. Well, oh yeah, absolutely. Be respectful yeah. to morning dress. Yeah, um, and um, but for others, yeah, that might be a tall order, non. Yeah, exactly. It's, like it's, anxiety producing. Yes, and I think I think it's kind of clear when when um when Simon comes in here, right? Like he is saying how um you know when he gets on the bus or it's you know the, the train or whatever to his job uh, or to his I think he works at a WeWork or something like that, you know. Like uh, some rental space, but like it's a fancy has... we work those in, in Mayfair. Yeah, like I think I think it's like one of those shared office works or or some you know some place. He mentioned it on Blamo. Uh, if you haven't listened to his his episodes on like hand cut and Blamo, definitely listen to those. Um, but yeah, Simon 
even says like you know he feels weird like when he when he gets on like in his suburb first wearing like what he's wearing and it doesn't feel a lot more it doesn't feel as acceptable until he gets into like the business district or get back you know as he passes through in london or whatever and so it's that thing where if you're really conscious of everywhere you're going it becomes that like you know kind of similar to what you know the issue when we were talking with henrik where like it's just you get kind of too deep in the weeds about this whole idea, right? And and then you expand on that to like every situation you're in. You know, that we've talked with all just about like, you know, if you're the hypotheticals, like if you're in the school class or whatever. And so as someone who's never really had to do that, because maybe we take cars everywhere, so we bypass any kind of personal uh <laughs> like non like you know, non-destination context, um, we don't really think about that. We know where we're going. And we know we're going to be fine. You know, like my party, like, yeah, it might look fucking weird that I would be, if I went to Trader Joe's the day of wearing a fucking bandana and navy blazer with white pants, but I did all my shopping beforehand and I drove straight there so no one else had to see it other than the people who knew what I was already going to wear. So it's kind of this, like, you know, obviously depends on the context, but I think a lot of people maybe don't have that luxury. And then combine that with the fact that they are not as used to you know, being in, um, they're not as used to experimenting or, or even thinking about clothes in that way. So each action that they take in that direction is still too much. They haven't had time to dilute it down into something that's a little bit more, you know, something, something that they can, uh, get used to over time. They just, they just haven't had that. And some people get discouraged, right? They get, the, get they get intimidated or they get the anxiety that you were saying all just, so it's, it, it is a tall order, you know? So one thing that I think about you know, with this topic, like who are you dressing for? Who, who should you dress for, right? Should you dress for yourself or should you dress for other people? Yeah. I think the easiest answer to this isn't just picking one side and sticking to it. That's, it's, yeah. it's saying like, will other people actually care hmm. what I wear to this wedding or this thing at a church or this birthday party or whatever? And if the answer is yes, if there is an expectation that you will be look a certain way at work, then yes, you are now dressing for other people. If you're going somewhere to a bar or you know a museum or something where no one gives a shit who you are, yeah, which is honestly like most places outside of work and yeah. a social obligation, mm-hmm. um, like a formal social obligation then dress for yourself. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the simplest answer is, will other people actually care what I wear? Most yeah. of the time that's no, except when it's yes. And then that, <laughs> that'll tell you what to do and, and who to dress for. Cla- I feel classic like that's like direction answer where, where the, where the whole argument doesn't matter. Yeah, it depends and sometimes yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> So what's the point of discussing? I don't know, MJ. What do you like? I mean, you you know you're at the, you're at the mall, right? You 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 see a lot of yep. like you know more regular people. You know you know Kiyoshi sees a lot more high income clients. You know, I see a lot of creative people. You know, you see a lot of regular people. What do you, what do you see from there from you and your coworkers about dressing for yourself and others? Um. Yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, you know, we can go back to like the practicality thing too, where it's like, um you're kind of like within your parameters you're you're doing the most you're you messing with it. it yeah um um and then like the the very subtle things for um you know this the decisions you make with your pieces for like the subtle um what's the word like individuality sort of things um that sort of thing it's nothing too crazy cuz i mean it is like the mall there is yeah. like you know majority of just regular people <laughs> um yeah. You know, um, it is cool to see when uh, customers come in and they notice like the little intentional things that you do. Yeah. Um, that kind of um, not necessarily say that you're looking for that, but it it helps, right? <laughs> it's cool yeah, like getting yeah recognition and seeing people kind of stand out for like the niche stuff that you kind of know. You know, it's kind of mm. like yeah, when we see like a guy wearing white socks and loafers, you know, like they they've made this intentional choice behind it um because there was a guy that saw me like i was wearing um like my salvage jeans like i just cuffed them right Mm -hmm. and this guy was like oh maybe i won't get them like altered like three inches cut off i'll just cuff (laughs) them too and stuff like that so that's that's like uh 
That was uh, that's like always a, a, a cool thing. That was always weird to me that that was such like a big leap for so many guys working retail. Yeah, me too. Like me too. people don't know how to cuff their jeans. Like it's it's just crazy <laughs> to me. Yeah, I we're always like again we don't have like the craziest style. I don't think you know mm-hmm. like we're not mm-hmm. we're not we're not like I feel like throwing fits. If you show that to like a guy at the mall, but I don't know, maybe like a teenager would like it, right? But like, you know, like a late twenties guy who works in tech might be like, Whoa, that's too much for me, right? You know? Yeah. But then it's like cuffing your pants is like not wearing like a five inch nylon short, like a baggy camp collar. I mean, it's it's like, like a normal it's, thing. It's like the guy I was helping in men's warehouse who was like yeah. telling me, Oh, I have pretty conservative style and I'm looking for some ties. And so I showed him a red and blue striped tie and he's like, I couldn't wear anything <laughs> like that. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the conservative option, brother. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, maybe he, maybe he's like, I'm going to give you like a plain ass tie. Yeah. And then I just tie. showed him solids and was like, okay, well, there you go. Like that's that's what he that's what he wanted. Yeah. Um, the whole time. I I know I want to get to some of the comments here. So guilty for gaming uh, says I think due to quarantine he discovered how to dress more for himself, working in the finance oh finance industry. So yeah, we got some corporate guys in here. I'm even less inclined to wear a suit and tie unless it's something very important. I've always admired the tech field in a way. I don't find the hoodie and jeans appealing, but something in the middle between suits and sweats for his vibe is that he feels if he dresses for himself. And that he's comfortable and it also frees your mind. Ah, very tech. If you're dressed for yourself and you're something you're comfortable, it frees your mind to focus on other things at hand, like a presentation, versus worrying if the entire pocket square is correct. Now, I'm not, I don't want to push back too far here, but it's like, I feel like when you don't wear a suit and tie super often, the pressure is on, like I said earlier, about having everything be correct because you don't, you want to lessen the mistakes that you make, right? Mm-hmm. But then, if you keep doing it, you don't care. Like Spencer and I don't think whether or not our tie is like perfect, right? Like we we've done it so maybe if you asked us in like 2014, going to Dapper Day, yeah, we'd be like, oh fuck, I don't want to get anything on this. I got to make sure the tie is straight or whatever. But then now it's like I'm gonna tuck this into my waistband. If I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to retie it again. <laughs> like who the fuck yeah. cares? Um, but it's one of those things again. Do people want to go through this? Do people want to figure out what it means to dress for yourself or for others? Because my my big thing with this is like, if you just admit what your goals are, then you don't really need to figure out the dichotomy between the two, right? If you just say, mm. "I'm gonna dress for my job because that's what's important to me," that's fine. You know, it's it's like if you want to dress basic, do it, admit it, but don't try and be holier than thou that your that your mode is correct. Like I don't think that saying, "Oh, you should always dress for others because it's good manners," like that's stupid. And then saying, "Oh, only dress like only a good dresser dresses for themselves." I'm like, I mean. Kind of, yeah, but like any kind of big jumps like that are kind of just tough. Just just say what you want to dress for. Like, what's yeah. the actual... So when, like, you, when, you talk like, like... when you talk like that, you end up sounding like someone... Like, the comments of a of an MFA post that got really big and hmm. made it to the front page. That's like... Yeah. That's, that's the kind of person that's, you know, that's in there. Uh, I do want to... I know all this is something, but I'm going to go through Jeremy's because this kind of ties in what I was saying. So he says... Jeremy says, the problem in the West is that conforming is being individual, but with very vague and moving bounds. <laughs> Conservative of the real punks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, he says that looking basic is a sin in particularly formal events, so much that being tacky is sometimes more acceptable. This is true because of the rise of happy socks. Like, that's kind of, like, the whole hmm. reasoning behind it, huh. right? Where, like, where they don't, they, like, we, we, like he's saying, we push, we put so much pressure on, like, oh, we gotta be cool and quirky, but it's always done in the tackiest ways possible because that's just what people assume, right? When you, and he says here, when there is no, um, people don't understand the difference between refined, basic, and I would even say refined, basic, and tacky because there is no codified dress forms in the, uh, you know, as we kind of get to more and more recent years. And that's assuming, he says, that's assuming you don't care. And most people do care especially for hoping to meet friends and prospective partners. And this is why I feel like, you know, we did that whole stream on what people want to wear for partners, but I feel like we need to have like an actual podcast episode on it just because that way it's not lost to YouTube. Like mm-hmm. we can actually like say it because hmm. it's one of those things where you have to fucking do the stuff, friends, prospective partners or whatever. You have to do dressing in a way that's self curating, right? Because I remember for so many things, and maybe this is slightly off topic, but in terms of like dating profiles, a lot of the biggest advice 
is to dress in a way or have a profile that is the most acceptable to other people, right? You want to get up as much attention as possible. But I find that it is so stupid because that means at the end of the day, you are competing with literally everybody else if everybody else is following that advice. But if you curate your feed, whether it's your dress, whether it's your pictures for, for dating profiles, whether it's your LinkedIn, whatever, if you curate that in order to get a very specific thing, then you'll be, you'll, you'll be able to know whether or not how far, to quote all this, you know, how far you're deviating from the mean. What exactly do you have to change to get that specific thing, you know? So that's kind of the issue here where, you know, with like, with this idea of dressing for yourself or others is that, you know, if you just define the goal, then it would everything else kind of just fades away. You can just focus on what that is. And mm. in terms of dress, for let's say for your friends, literally, I got this into this conversation with uh, with people on Reddit about about the uh, that you know hanging out article. And it's like, were you guys friends beforehand, or like did you like you know did men to bring you together? And it's like, I feel like at this point when I meet like the way I dress, the way all of us dress, kind of invites a very similar person to our group you know where we're not friends with every suit guy obviously but we tend to be friends with the suit guys who have the same expanded idea on clothing you know it's it is that like you know it's so specific and that is the goal i mean that's why the people on the patreon even though everyone has different styles still has kind of this common through line in the approach to clothing and when you have that as the goal, then nothing really else matters that's why we're able to talk about so many things but if this was like a podcast about the most you know the most appropriate way to address someone we would we wouldn't be able to help someone who has a widely different context you know so it, it, i think it helps if you if you just know specifically whether that is friends because all of us are kind of friends and we all like clothing and i think that in dating uh you can still find dates if you dress weird hmm. you just gotta find you just, but you just gotta find the right dates yeah you know like that's that's the big thing you know you're if if your goal is to like fuck every variation of person out there, if you want to, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be able to pull both jocks and nerds and and hipsters or whatever, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a t-shirt and shorts to figure out to find a way to make to appeal all of them. But yeah, that's if you, you're if gonna you, pull no one most likely. Exactly, but if you want to just you know date a gym rat, then maybe you only wear athleisure. Maybe you wear fucking super tight short uh inseam shorts and like a, a bro tank right like you just ha you just define your fucking goal so it doesn't really matter because then you're dressing for yourself and for others because you find a common ground in that area right it's like if yeah. you work it's the same thing with like if you work in menswear like oh but you can wear you couldn't wear that to work yeah i can because i work in a creative industry and i happen to like it so it works out both ways it's like people don't want to, to i don't know why people don't want to do that like it's that's that idea of like maybe curating your life, maybe not to your clothing, but to the approach that you have to life. That is still seems to be a very hard sell, you know, mm. and I feel like a lot of things could be solved if people just did that more. And I know all this I've kind of talked about that a little bit in our kind of discussions about, you know, if you if you want to make more, you know, if you want to meet a certain person, you have to identify with that thing you know yeah you have to you know same thing with friends you can't you can't just say i don't make i want to make gamer friends and then not play video games like you have to you gotta <laughs> you gotta have something in common with these people in order to make it work yeah. so that way the transition isn't as isn't as harsh you know this kind of this kind of goes back to like what you were saying earlier just like just just be real kind of and yeah admit what you want out of it and um it kind of goes along with just start doing it just start doing the thing because we all kind of learn by doing you yeah. know with within this uh you know menswear hobby or whatever mm -hmm. or like a lot of other hobbies you just kind of if you start doing it it gets it gets easier right yeah there there is that sense of like i mean even even at the end of the, right like like um permanent style says um that he still will wear like the pockets were on the bus and if he feels uncomfortable he'll just take it off which is a mm -hmm. good way of doing it you know like if, it, if you literally yeah, if you literally feel like what you're doing is bad, then just, just just don't do it. But, you know, maybe take the chance. And then maybe this is just an issue of people, you know, crazily enough, not wanting to try this challenge. I don't know what that is. And I don't know how to sell this challenge on people where you find or you're in pursuit of the confidence to own what it is. I, I don't think that's necessarily like self-esteem. 
um maybe it's like a cost benefit thing of figuring out whether something like whether a channel like you know where they're going through this is worth it but it is like i said earlier where you should find the nebul the nebulous like dress code inviting as opposed to scary but i don't know how to, i don't but i don't know how to how to make that case because it just depends on your personality maybe i don't know i don't know so unless you have the knowledge base to play within that realm it will always be it will always be nerve-wracking it'll always be anxious i think that's the issue here it's mainly a lack of a lack of knowledge and a lack of understanding that causes the anxiety that causes the anxiety yeah it's I don't know, but, but is that true though? Do, does knowledge help abate that? Like, I don't. I, mean, I feel like sometimes knowledge. Or like if, if you're referring to whether like knowledge of every, if something is good, like like someone telling you if it's good or not, is that what you're referring to? It's because I was I was going to say sorry. Of, like uh, like options to express yourself. If we if we have to go well, back to the old chestnuts of corporate dressing. It's the right. knowledge to. It's a knowledge that allows you to know what options you have to play within that arena. If you, if you, if the only thing you know about is um, radical changes to the design of your suits or wearing fun socks or whatever, and that's it, then well, yeah, you, I will, yeah, yeah, I, I do agree with you. But I was gonna say that it become it's it's still like it the attitude has to come into play because when you just have knowledge, then you then you become that die workwear meme of like. Oh, no one knows how casual I am because I'm wearing patch pockets. You know, because that's that's knowing patch pockets are casual, knowing that soft shoulders are good. But like, then you start like kind of second guessing yourself, and that's kind of like, it's you're you're almost there. You know, it's a little bit of like you know, yeah, you know a little bit more leeway, but you're just not quite at that end part where maybe it's the whole fuck it attitude. And that's yeah, 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 I agree. It's not the only avenue to right, yeah, gaining it's, the knowledge. It's usually that's, a first step. I'm not, I'm not say, uh, yeah, I'm not saying that the knowledge will make you a confident person who's willing to play with dress codes. No, it, it's, it's, it's that in combination with, well, with confidence, as you said, and a, a lack of, and, and, and not getting too focused into the esoteric details of, of what makes this casual and then falling into that trap like you said with Barkley and uh, and and uh, and and all that um, I think we're it's a combination yeah it's a combination Sorry, where... of things but certainly knowledge is important I think and maybe yeah, well, I think it's, it's a cause of a lot of anxiety but yes Can so I? I I I think where people are finding themselves is when they have knowledge therefore they're interested and they're looking for certain answers but then when they actually have the confidence to do some experimenting and they get a little bit of experience and they think this was received well, this was not received well, this worked in this context. And then those little baby steps just build on themselves until eventually right. you're, you can be a little bit more um, bold in your POV. That, I mean, yeah, what you said there about like, you know, the, the getting the good feedback thing, maybe that's the issue, right? Like, like people are just happen to be around shitty people. You know, like, I mean, we've also talked about this for a while, too. Like, you know, if your family or your friends give you shit for dressing the way you do, that can be kind of tough to break through, you know? And obviously, we don't know how everyone and how everyone else's context is. And maybe we're just some of us are lucky to have had, at the very least, friends who don't care. But maybe in the positive side, friends who do build it up and go, wow, you look sick, man. And like, oh, thanks. You know, like, that's kind of a tough part. And that ties into how if you curate your life like i'm not saying pick a career based on what you want to dress like but i'm if saying you, that but it's like if you <laughs> just if? i mean no. you know like if you're able to have this kind of idea of of finding a positive place to be and this and this is a lot of work obviously you know most people who are able to dress in menswear or throwing whatever kind of a sack it is and have take no shit for it they probably worked really maybe not like hard career wise, but like, you know, like it takes a lot of searching and a lot of experience to, f to finally land a place that is a positive, you know, a positive uh, environment. You know, you gotta, just like how you gotta like keep looking for a good partner who understands why you like menswear, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but it, 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 it can happen if you just put in the work, um, and, you know, in curating. And so it's inviting that, which sounds like a lot of work, right? So maybe it's not as attractive as a choice, but it's, it's a lot it's of work a... if it's a choice and it's and it's a game plan that you're putting together. 
hopefully and ideally would be a sort of not nebulous but a general goal that you that in working towards you sort of go through these specifics just naturally in pursuing that goal right and that's think- the best place to be when you pursue the goal too, the goal will also change because yes. when I first started, I was trying to impress people that I worked for, for like, Hey, I'm a fun, creative guy. So I'm going to dress in this way. And you're going to think I'm a fun, creative guy and give me, give me jobs and remember me. And, and now like, I don't really care. You know, my boss never compliments the way I dress and, and I don't care because I don't particularly want to grow up to, to be like my boss. That's totally fine. We're different people. Um, you know, so the whole goal of like why I was sort of dressing for work anyway completely changed. Yeah. In the five years that I've been doing it. You, I mean, it's, it's just kind of, yeah, as Jeremy says here, right? It's like, it's like a spiritual change. You kind of just gotta do it. Yeah. The religion <laughs> of menswear. Absolutely. Um, he says here, fashion is a market and self-confidence, for lack of a better word, spiritual. You don't reach nirvana through hard work and strategic purposes. You do it by breaking your chains. Um, and so there's, and he will contrast this very nice way of putting it with a comment on permanent style, which says most people dress to be attracted to others and gain authority. The way you look determines how you will be received and has consequences. Everybody likes to be liked, especially members of the opposite sex. I was recently obliged to change my barber, and the man proposed was covered from head to toe in ink, and every body part pierced and looked like he inherited Sid Vicious's wardrobe. He was probably a nice guy, but he didn't get the job, and I was going to let him in, let him within a million miles of my crowning glory. How he looked had a direct commercial consequence. Secondly, I'm firmly of the opinion that the way you dress affects the way you behave. Not too many smart people go around littering, parking irresponsibly, dropping the f bomb, or per- behaving in an antisocial manner. I do all when of those dressed- things, and I'm the smartest <laughs> man who's ever lived. About- Sounds like a second yeah. snob to me. That's. I mean, can we? Yeah. I mean, can um, we conclude that this guy's just kind of awful? Yeah. When dress standards decline, so do dress standards behavior. This is such Karen talk. Like this guy lost out on the best haircut client of all time because of his tattoos. Like he lost my forty dollars. Like okay, it's like well, like, it's like the the curb episode with the casual Friday, uh, the lawyer yeah, on casual yeah. Friday. Yeah, Friday's like I'm not here to be on a fucking rodeo. I'm yeah. here to go get my law, get my law. Like, you're writing my, yeah, like, it's like you're handling my divorce. You're writing my will, whatever. <laughs> like I need you, need you under strategic purchases. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's kind of like who the. F- like this fucking this guy sucks man like this is this is like the opposite of like i mean we i guess this is kind of a horseshoe in kind of a sense we're like we're both talking about curation in a sense right like oh you want the people you interact with to kind of be at a similar level but instead of celebrating the approach you're like saying fuck you to this guy you know i don't care who cuts my hair as long as f-bombs yeah it's arrogance and sanctimony it's I, I'm, bastard, dressing you and the way bastard. I'm dressing is the superior method of dressing. I am a better person for looking like this. And you lost out my business what? because you so look what? like shit. So I'm, that, yeah, that F bomb thing bro. that is so funny is that, um, like, I was walking a little Tokyo with my friend Annie. Oh, yeah, this might have been literally like last, like last weekend. We were meeting up with some of our other friends. Um, and I was wearing like yeah, sport coat and tie, and he was wearing like a dress and like a nice jacket. And we walked by this this homeless dude, and um, he just kind of you know we just passed by each other. And I was like, oh yeah, that fuck. I I said like, oh that fucking sucks, like out loud or something. And he goes, whoa, you dress like that and speak with those words, Get, like th- like what's this world coming to? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like like it's it's so it it's weird. so funny that like. I- like, yeah. oh, a smart person doesn't drop the f bomb. Like, what? That is this... so not true. Every professor I know is a potty mouth. Yeah, like, isn't wasn't the, on, on this study, this like, like lots of studies that say that, or also seem to suggest that people by intelligence swear more. Definitely, yes. And I think the whole argument of like dress well to get ahead and project your power is definitely the sort of opinion of somebody that doesn't have a lot of power it's the yeah, opinion well, of people we sort of hate people who still it's are, the opinion yeah of people right like no it kind of is <laughs> anyone who like, disagrees with me i hate you but 
Yeah, it's the it's the it's the yeah it's the opinion yeah. that uh, the way I'm doing it, it's my way or the highway, and mm-hmm. I'm doing it right, and all. Yeah, and all everyone else who's dressed in the other way is doing it wrong. I'm the only one doing it right. I'm 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 the last bastion of Western civilization or whatever. All these thoughts will sort of come in from come come in from that little grain of a mentality. Um is this a good time to shift over to Gentleman's Gazette then? So we can stunt oh. some days guys. Yeah, we'll 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 <laughs> off in like the next two minutes or so we have like the last twenty minutes for this fucking video. Yeah. Um but it's like yeah, I you know what what I don't like about this, right, is like at what point did we, and this is a rhetorical question, but like, at what point did we just say that, oh, if you have tattoos, you're a bad person? Like, you're, you're well, not professional. Santa decided that. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, Santa. Yeah. yeah. Was, if, if you're, right. I mean, yeah, if you, if you, if you get a tattoo, you're not getting a gift that year. Yeah. I mean, clearly. That's yeah. kind He's of going to come is. to your house with coal, man. But it's like, it's crazy that like he, this guy did like, he, he wasn't even like, oh, let's test out the haircut. Let's like, let's see what they can actually do. Like, it's so, it's so weird that we put this in there. And I don't think, and I've, probably if we said this to this guy, he'd be like, oh, well, everyone judges based on appearance. That's not an excuse. Like, just because people do it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. You know, like, again, like I... I might have friends who are dressed pretty well, but it doesn't mean I can't be friends with someone who doesn't wear a suit. You know, does that does that say something about them? Oh, they just don't have the taste for the finer things in life. And that's a fucking stupid ass opinion to have, man. Stupid ass. It's so arrogant. It's so <laughs> arrogant. It's just it's just awful. I think I am the right amount of arrogance. If you have more arrogance than me, then you're probably that's that's probably you're a bad too kind arrogant. Of arrogance. <laughs> that's just. That's just what it is. Oh man, they're talking about President Trump in these in the comment thing there now. It's, <laughs> oh my god, dude, that is. It's revolving really fast, isn't it? Yeah, it's o- it's over for them already. I got arrogance. I got the best arrogance. No one like <laughs> has arrogance like me. Yeah. No one's got my coffee av- uh, arrogance. Is, uh, is mentioning yeah. Trump going to be the new Godwin's law? As yeah, maybe. You know, we'll, we'll do some receipts as the background. Now it's going to be first guy to bring up Trump in the debate. Hmm. Just... We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it, I, I, I mean, think uh, he. I think he's gonna. I don't know. I think he might end up being like, like uh, gu- guilty free gaming says. Um, I I have zero arrogance. What his friends? <laughs> I'm the says least arrogant like, person in the world. Yeah. yeah fuck <laughs> you. No one is less arrogant than I am. Mm. The better you dress, yeah. the worse you yeah. can yeah. behave. There you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right? Like, that's, you know, come on, Fred. Fred's got it, you know? It's it's one he's of those one, things, I mean, I wish... the singularity, man. It just comes down to the whole thing of um, that guy who shows dong, uh, <laughs> or the outline of his dong, where it's like, for all of this stuff, I just want to be in the context of... I can understand it, right? Like, I I really do want to see, like, you know, a Guilty for Gaming since you had a friend tease about wearing wool pants to a casual setting. Like, I want to know what the outfit was. I want to see what everyone else is wearing just so I can see that. I just want people to know the context and everything and, 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 and have these examples. That way, we can definitively say whether it was a good idea to do it or not, you know? Like, and maybe that's why I take pictures all the time. So I can prove, like, look at me, guys. I was appropriate. Don't believe me? Here's a Just picture watch. of Ethan and Spencer, you know. But yeah, anyway, great, great article from from Permanent Style. I think you know it's if 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 Permanent Style kind of like leads the forefront of this kind of more introspective way of thinking. I think it's really cool. I mean, despite some of the bad comments, I think the fact that people are talking about it is at least a good move. Um, something I wish we did have time for is the fact that oh, dressing for yourself nowadays tends to all look like one thing now. It's the kind of like not really throwing fits core, but kind of like the vintagey, mm-hmm. you know, kind of. Bryce Lynn's ass kind of a thing, 70s style that we see like Alex Fetkovich wear, that we see like Jeremy kind of wear. Like there's a, there's a kind of common theme for this for this new, you know, idea of dressing for yourself. It's pretty interesting, you know, to have this be codified into a look, just like how, you know, before quirky videos were all random, but now quirky videos or TikToks, whatever is a style of content you can do now you know like mm-hmm. like it just becomes folded into i mean they're like, yeah they're like fucking ads that are like that are like that right like, that are like, like, just like, look like tiktoks now yeah or or like uh what's it called um 
like when when uh, uh Old Spice, right? Like that was crazy, and now every like you know, if you have like a weird non sequitur or like a really random ass like mascot, that's kind of like the yeah. it's it's in that style. So maybe that's a that's a topic for a future thing. It's kind of post pandemic menswear in a sense, but maybe we'll find another topic to tack that onto if we have some time. Um, but yeah, interesting to see you know like. If we're talking about trends, you know, before it was like, oh, it's got to be artisanal, handmade. Now it's dressed for yourself. And now there's a, a very coherent look of what that is. So, who knows? We'll, we'll, who we'll discuss knows? that one in the future.